1,130 feet per second. I could tell by the crack in my ear because that made a lot more noise. 1,130, that rifle just went supersonic. Let me introduce you to the FX Impact Mark II with the new Power Penham on board. And if you wanted to, you can shoot a 2-2 pellet supersonic. I hear you ballistic experts out there getting all upset, screaming at the screen, typing things as quick as you can. You should be doing that with a pellet, supersonic, that's wrong. You're absolutely right. And I will let you know that I'm using the JSB lead freeze to get that speed at the start of the video. However, same gun, a couple of shots later, I'm shooting the exact 15.89s <laughs> at 1,010 feet per second. This rifle is not just about pellets and that's why I'm showing you the proof of concept. This rifle is making sure that you can go from shooting pellets as fast as they are possibly designed to being able to go straight over to shooting slugs at the same time. All you speed freaks out there listen to what I'm about to tell you. While this power plenum now gives you the ability to send projectiles down range at ridiculous speeds from an air gun, it's not all about that. You still have to make sure that the speed your rifle is shooting at matches what's required from your ammunition. Yes, you do have this mega power reserve at the back of your rifle now, but it does something else as well. Let me try and explain to you what a power plenum is compared to the original plenum. Now, X is the amount of air required to launch the pellet forward, down the barrel and down range. And this is very important. So I'm going to put X just there for a minute, like that. All pre-charged air rifles are powered using compressed air, which is pressurised in a cylinder or a bottle like these. And the gauge on the side tells you what pressure is left in these tanks after you've fired each shot. In rifles without a regulator, this pressure is vital because when you pull the trigger, this pressure is what launches the pellet downrange and that's where you get a power curve from because there is no regulation of this high pressure air. On a regulated gun, like you see here, you've got regulators just inside there and as you know, you can adjust them. Now, that regulator regulates the air between the high pressure bottle there and the air that sits in the plenum here before the valve. So it's like a little regulating switch. This comes through. When this fills up, it backs up against that regulator and at a certain pressure, this regulator closes off and then we don't need any more air coming through until we fire the next shot. And this is where X is important because X is the amount of air required to launch that pellet downrange. And X needs to be as consistent as possible to make sure that you get the most consistent feet per second as your pellet goes down that barrel. Here's the clever bit. Now, X is what you need to make the pellet go down the barrel of your gun at the speed you want. So X has to be squeezed into that space there. And to do that, to get the amount of air in that space there that you need, you have to use more high pressure air from your bottle, which means that your regulator has to be set higher to squeeze enough air into there. The clever bit with the plenum is that there's more space in there. So to fit X into there is a lot easier, which means that you don't have to use so much high pressure air from this bottle, which means your regulator can be set lower, which means you get more out of one charge, which means you get more shots because your regulator is lower and it's lower because your plenum is bigger. However, 
if you want to open the regulator even more, it means you get even more power than you can do from that because it can hold more air. And don't forget, you can adjust how much air is in there by adjusting the regulator. And you can monitor what pressure of air is in there by looking at the regulator gauge, which is at the back. What I think the plenum is about is the fact that because you've got that storage at the back, you can set your regulator lower. The gun is still capable of firing the ammunition at the speeds you need, but with that regulator at a lower pressure, you get more use of air out of that bottle, which means you get more shots. And that, for me, is what the plenum is all about. It does make it an extremely versatile piece of kit when you're out in the field. If you're going out and you want to shoot two fives at 900 feet per second, you can do that. You can do that 130 times before you need to start thinking about topping that bottle back up. So back off that regulator. You don't need it set right up there. Now, I'm going to detune this back to where it should be. I could use that amp reg, quarter of a turn down, fire a shot, but it's Christmas and I've got food to eat. So I'm just going to pop the bottle off and do it that way. On the first day of Christmas, my true love Let the hiss stop, just so you know. Dry fire a couple of shots to clear the pressure in the system. With the system completely empty, yes and yes, I'm going to just put that reg back in where it was by tightening it up a little bit. Remember, doing it with the air in, quarter of a turn and shoot. If you're doing it with the air out, you can do it a lot quicker. There you go, I've cheated. I never even took my bipod or my chronograph off system, refills in a second. The reg is back on around 100. Just going to have to tweak it a little bit, I'm sure, but I'm back to basically where I started. And I have, of course, got to put back my hammer spring to where it was before I started my supersonic experiment. And don't forget that I need to readjust my valve opening. And then using a chronograph, because you have to use a chronograph to do this, you set about harmonically tuning everything back up. So it all works in perfect coordination with the speed that the ammunition you're using requires. Nine, <laughs> I think this setup is a little bit too hot for that 500 barrel. So let's stick something longer on in a bigger calibre and see what it can do. One more. It's very consistent though. I'm using these new Hades as my 2.5 pellet today, and I'll tell you what, they are utterly whistling at around 920 feet per second. Sometimes you do something that just makes you smile and these Hades in 2.5 at 100 yards down there have just made me smile and I caught it on camera as well. 100 yards, around 920 feet per second and I've got a nice big thumb hole size group. That's rather good. And the good thing is, is that remember with that power plenum on board, I can do that at that speed about 130 times without having to refill that 480cc bottle. That's not bad. Now, next question, what's it like in 30 calibre? This is the same rifle. All I do each time is change the barrel system and it's a factory stock system. 
Once I've adjusted the valve a tad and the hammer spring with a few more bar on the reg, I'm happy to go in 30 caliber. I think there is something else going on here. It is possible that getting more push from less regulated so air old. is actually making the rifle shoot a cleaner shot. Pellets are disturbed by the hammer bounce and the dirty air which can creep out behind the shot. If less air is being used, is this making a cleaner shot? So less pressure, less dirty air. Therefore, a cleaner okay. shot each time. The light is fading as you can see, but just have a look at that pressure gauge on the side of that rifle. It's just below 100 bar on a 30 cal. That, it's utterly staggering. I got 79 shots at around 873, 875 feet per second. Consistent shots and incredibly accurate as well, as you can see from the footage. That's, that's amazing. To have that many shots from one 480cc bottle, that's enough to do a competition. 25 targets, 79 shots, you've got enough sighters. That is bonkers. That power plenum, I think, the bigger you go in calibre, the better it gets. Speechless. This video was never going to be an accuracy test with that rifle. It just wasn't. I was never going to do that, but I have to show you what I've got. I simply do. These are, I mean, this is shrapnel that you can see here because I'm shooting against the plate, but you can still see exactly where the target has been hit. And look at that, that group, that's under a two pound coin there. That group, all bar three, is under a two pound coin there. There's another group there under the two pound coin. You know, I, I do, there's part of me that thinks that, hang on a minute, maybe the whole concept of 100 yard bench shooting is done. Maybe it's further now uh, because the rifles have clearly mastered that. I mean, if you can do that consistently time after time, if I could do that at Armac, I could win me a lot of money. Back to the slow motion of the 2.5 and the 30 shooting. I can see how straight that pellet is flying. It's ruler straight. That's why I feel there may be less turbulence behind that pellet. But let's wait for the ballistic experts to tell me, no, I'm wrong. I get used to that. These two impacts are going to demonstrate to you straight away the difference that that power planner makes in your settings. The bottom impact is my original 30 caliber. The top one is my power planner setup. Now, the bottom one has a couple of differences and you'll see them straight away. First of all, the valve adjuster. The difference between old and new is clear. Then we go to the regulator look where the regulator is set on the old and the new and I'm telling you these are both shooting at around 880 feet per second and if I tell you the bottom one is shooting around 30 shots before I'm empty and need to refill and the top one as I've said is shooting 79 shots you can clearly see the difference that that planum is making Also, the other good bit of news is, is this power plenum is completely backwards compatible with any impact. Now, 
the valving and bits and pieces on here and the, re and the regulator is slightly different so you may not get exactly the same performance out of that as you do in that if you were to put a new power plenum on there but it's certainly going to make a difference and I'm also hearing that FX USA is trying to work something out where there are people that can do the in-store for you if you don't want to do it at home, if you want to be backwards compatible. But that's all yet to be confirmed, and I'm sure you're going to hear more about that through press releases and whatever. And I don't even know if I'm allowed to mention that they have a power plenum for the Dreamline. For UK sub-12 foot-pound shooters, this isn't for us. The maths just don't work. If you've got a firearms ticket in the UK though, you are going to want one of these. But either way, it's a big learning curve, it's backwards compatible, and boy, if you own an FX, you ain't never gonna be bored.